Hello, I am one of the excavators. My name is Albert Redder, and I'm one of the excavators of Horn Shelter Number no. Two. In the area you see back here is the, is the Horn Shelter. Uh, I first became interested in archaeology at the age of about eight, when my mother, mother brought home from the field for me uh, an arrowhead. This interest in, in collecting arrowheads and Indian artifacts continued until I went into the service in 1942. Uh, while in the service, I had access to books on archaeology, and I realized that I was missing half the story by not documenting location and other important information about the artifacts that I found. While in the service, I continued to look for artifacts. Uh, even while hiking the back roads of France or digging slit trenches in foxholes. Uh, after my discharge, I moved to Waco, and in Waco, I found, in the Waco Public Library, I found a complete set of the bulletins of the Texas Archaeological and Paleontological Society. Then I learned what archaeology was about. When I joined the Archaeological Society, I, and uh, by attending field schools, attending lectures, and with the help of Mr. Watt, I uh, learned my interest in archaeology group. I first visited the Horn Shelter in 1954 when camping with my family across the river, across the river from the site. Uh, seeing the site, seeing the cave across the river, we swam over there to investigate but it would be 12 years before Frank and I continued, before Frank and I decided to do serious investigation of the shelter. I never dreamed so many years of unwritten history existed in one place. The Horn Shelter is on the west side of the Brazos River, about 11 miles below the Whitney Dam, and it is named in honor of Herman and Adelaine Horn, adjacent landowners uh, who own the land that we traveled to reach the shelter and their generosity and friendship is greatly appreciated. The Horn Shelter has been known for at least 12,000 years. It was used for habitation started with the earliest inhabitants of Bosque County Shelter, continuing until about 1500 AD. Around 1500 AD, a huge flood filled the shelter with silt to the ceiling and beyond, no longer allowing room for habitation. At this time, there was over 20 feet of deposits in the shelter. Uh, the filling of the Horn Shelter allowed for the preservation of the artifacts which were left there by its inhabitants. The shelter was not inhabited again until the early 20th century, uh, when five feet of deposit was removed from the south end of the shelter. Uh, two separate strata of Anglo deposits are, de are evident and separated by a flood layer. These, appear, these deposits appear to have been largely left by campers, hunters, and fishermen. Frank Watt and I started an excavation in 1966 in the south end of the overhang because headroom existed to work. Uh, at this time, the metric system was not often used in North American archeology, span so uh, all of the uh, Shelter was laid out in five foot grid, five foot square grids, and all the records of the, of the shelter is uh, recorded in feet and inches. All of the soil was screened through a one quarter inch mesh hail screen, and most of the features were washed on a window screen. You'd be surprised at the number of small important artifacts that will go through the larger mesh screen. The five foot, first five foot excavation unit eventually became too deep to uh, remove soil easily for screening. So another five foot was open directly behind. Uh, and eventually these two units reached the bedrock floor at approximately 11 feet below the starting place, but below our starting excavation. Uh, the sequence of the strata in the shelter was complex and interesting. The shelter floor was covered with a layer of red clay, limestone river gravel, and a layer of yellow clay. This was all river fill. Above this was a five to six foot strata of uh, 
cave deposit that was deposited from the seal, decay of the ceiling and the back wall. In the bottom of this, this cave deposit were three, three red flood layers, each uh, evident by a uh, one quarter inch thick uh, deposit of red clay. Each of these layers capped a one to three inch thick deposit of human occupation. The red clay, these red clays probably originated in the Permian Basin in north central Texas. The age and artifact sequence of the Horn Shelter date from the Clovis period at about 12 to 10,000 BC, before 12 to 10,000 years ago. This was the earliest occupation in the shelter. Uh, the most exciting find in the Horn Shelter found August the 15th, 1970, was the discovery of an adult of a burial with, with an adult male and a juvenile about 10, 11, about 11, 12 years old, buried in the same grave at the same time. Uh, this individual was probably a very important person to this tribe of people that lived here due to the uh, grave goods that were buried with him. These goods consisted of uh, Tartar shells, red ochre, uh, antler flit chimping billets, uh, small bone-eyed needle, and other material. Above this layer was an archaic Indian occupation with a wide array of dark point types and bone fish hooks. The complete manufacturing technique of bone fish hooks was found. Above this stratum was a late prehistoric Indian period occupation. Scalern and Perdiz were the common arrow points. Uh, they mostly, this was mostly excavated by Forrester and Francis. And above this was the flood that closed the shelter in 1500 AD. Frank Watt and I continued to work together until about two years before his death in October 1981 at the age of almost 93 years. I continued working in the shelter until late 1990. And from start to finish, I worked at the Horn Shelter for 24 years. This concludes the review of the Horn Shelter, and I hope you have a pleasant visit to our museum. Thank you.